I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm determined to teach hopeless cooks how to be fearless in the kitchen. Today, I'm working with a scattered and hopeless cook. Oh. She goes from cooking with nails to a baking battle in a professional kitchen. That means no more messing around. Can I whip her into shape in time? Or will she create another dinner party disaster? I'm not 100% sure. That's gross. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Christine. Susan is infamous for her dinner party she throws where her guests bring all the food. Because if they don't, they'll have to face another version of Susan's rubber chicken. I'm very limited in what I can cook, so my friends know to expect chicken for dinner. Oh, chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. I think Aiden hates chicken. <laughs> I'm very bored. My mom's cooking. It's bland. And when she tries to break from the bird, she never really nails it. There was this beautiful ham, quite surprising to us for Sue. And I didn't have any toothpicks to secure the pineapple, so I used nails that I got from my hardware drawer. I thought it was a perfectly reasonable way to cook a ham until my friends started worrying about lead poisoning. Certainly lost my appetite in a hurry there. My mom was in the kitchen making a huge meal. I'd probably make an excuse to go over to a friend's for dinner just to escape. I would like to be able to throw together a meal that, that works without having to apologize for it. My job is to get her from useless to fearless so she can cook an entire meal for her daughter and friends from start to finish. Okay, so this is my kitchen. Wow, this is a pretty cool kitchen. Yes, for someone that doesn't cook. Being a single mom, why now mm -hmm. do you want to learn how to cook? Aiden's my daughter. She's getting very sick of chicken. So I'd like to learn to cook okay. things that she would enjoy. I think the next step for me is to watch you cook by yourself. No way. I'm feeling terrified. What I'd like for you to make me is some mashed potatoes. You can use any of these ingredients that you want, but you don't have to use them all. Yeah, it's a little frightening. I'm looking at all the ingredients in front of me. I don't know what half of them are. Can you boil them with the skin on and then... All right, I'm gonna try that. Go, go, go! Honestly, I don't know how to work the oven. It's really hard. Look, you go like this, ah. and then it's on. Okay. Eggs and mashed potatoes. It's not a bad idea when you think about it. I had a couple of interesting ideas. The eggs are really interesting, actually. I'm curious to see how that's gonna pan out. And burn my hands is what I'm going to do. Potatoes need at least 20 minutes to get fork tender. Susan has boiled hers for five. This is not going to be terribly easy, no. I can't believe I'm gonna have to eat these rock hard, half cooked mashed potatoes. Maybe I'm not using the beater. Okay, you can't go wrong with a little herb, feta, in normal potatoes. Whatever this mystery thing is. No reason you can't have a soft boiled egg in there, right? Now we're using eggs and mashed potatoes. <laughs> There's yours. Come on. <laughs> the mashed potatoes to me did not look like mashed potatoes. They were hideous. Mm. This is... <laughs> I can't even bite it. Oh, I want some of that. <laughs> That's gross. Oh, that is. I like it. Oh, it's all like mayonnaise y. The fact that Susan can look me straight in the eye and tell me she thinks those taste good, teaching her is going to be way tougher than I thought. These are the nastiest mashed potatoes I've ever seen. Oh. Susan really is clueless in the kitchen. I need to get her back to basics. So, we're going to start with how to make edible mashed potatoes. So the potatoes I'm using are Yukon Golds. These are good for mashed. So yours were not so totally done. And I'm gonna show you here, just looking for it to be tender. So you insert a knife in there, and you see how the knife kind of comes out? And we know they're totally done. Okay, so you wanna do a little mashing for me? This one's <laughs> squashed a lot nicer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
See what you're doing now? Don't do that. The circular motion, that creates all that kind of gloopy mess, okay. which you don't want. So ah. just go right down, right down. Oh. Now is that enough? That's beautiful. The other thing, when you added your milk, you added it cold, right mm -hmm. on. So a good little trick is to heat the milk, just add the butter to that, and that way you're not gonna cool down the potato and it's gonna absorb that moisture more readily and it's not gonna make them gluey, because remember you have that gluey problem. Do you know what that is? It's a nutmeg. This is gonna take the potato way up. Nutmeg is so delicious in anything that has to do with cream or milk or cheese. No, I never would've thought okay, of nutmeg. Smell that. Uh, Isn't that amazing? So give this a go yourself. Look at her. Then I'm gonna kick it up a little bit, some chopped chives with some roasted garlic. And then the extravaganza on top, I'm gonna put in a little grated Canadian cheddar cheese and we're gonna pop them under the broiler. They're gonna go in. We just call this mashed potatoes? There's no special name? We're gonna call this roasted garlic mash gratin. It sounds complicated, mm -hmm. but it's really, really easy. Okay, there they are. They oh, look, they look mama, beautiful. Right Woo! It's pretty impressive. Mm. Mm. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that's good. They're, they're a little bit hot, so. Yeah. But see what the cheese does? You get that nice, sharp cheddar and then the creaminess of the potatoes. Mama. All right, I will admit that Christine's tastes better. A lot better. I want to get you out of the kitchen now. We're going to go on a little excursion. I can't just stay here and eat the potatoes? <laughs> no, no, no. Are you up? I'm up for it. I have to eat a bit more, though, first. Coming up, Susan goes head to head in a heavy metal showdown. I may be collapsing on the floor. But will she be ready to cook for a party of 200 people? What happened? They're burnt. Yes. When Susan tries to cook, the results can be dangerous. Lost my appetite in a hurry there. Even her own daughter runs for cover when she cooks. Make an excuse to go over to her friends. But if my plan works, Susan will finally be able to host a dinner party where her family and friends feel safe enough to eat her food. Susan needs to get her hands dirty and learn how to work with dough, so she's ready for what I have planned for later. Okay, so Susan, yes. we are at Madeline's Cherry Pie and Ice Cream. Kyla, the owner, makes a wicked lemon meringue pie. Which I love. Kyla's gonna show us how to make your favorite lemon meringue pie. Ooh, okay. Have you ever made a lemon meringue pie before? No. no? It's very straightforward. There's three parts. The first part is the pie dough, of course. Mm -hmm. Your hands are going to get dirty. What do I know about making a pie? Nothing. This is like being in preschool. My hands oh my like it. Just give me a... That's like you really mean it. Oh, good girl. OK, look at that. Come on. Was that your first dough? Yes, that was my first. Your first dough job? Yeah. <laughs> making pie crust seems really easy for Susan, but now I've got a challenge for her. She's going to learn to make meringue the way I had to do it in chef school in France, completely by hand. This will make you a real chef. Are you ready? No. What is it we're doing? You're going to make the meringue by hand. Yeah. The old-fashioned way. No, come on. <laughs> so first well, you want to add really your... Egg whites. Yeah. So start mixing. Add the little bit of sugar. Wait a minute. If you lower the bowl a little bit, then you can you I can, can ease that? up on your yeah, shoulder you there so we don't have to go to the there chiropractor. You go. Look at that. Go, Susan. Go, Susan. <laughs> How long do I have to do keep this? Going, Come on. Oh All right, this is getting very tiring. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Making the meringue was a nightmare. I mean, honestly, I thought my arms were going to give out. I'm not quitting. Good girl. I, I may be collapsing on the floor, but I'm not <laughs> quitting. <laughs> she did. You know, it's going to be the best lemon meringue pie you ever ate in your life. I think it's great. I think it's fabulous. It's Are you ready for the test? OK. One, two, three. Ooh, no, no. Oh, no. OK. Look at that. It's not going. That's a good meringue. Beautiful. You're hired. Yeah, I'm impressed that you put yeah. it over your head. I'm too. Just like in France. There you go. All right. Ready to bake? Yep, ready to bake. All right. That's pretty good. That's a good feeling of accomplishment. I'm feeling more confident. I'm not sure I'm ready for the next step. I hope I'm ready for the next step. We'll see what it is. Now it's time to take Susan back into her kitchen, do a little cooking together, and we want to build on this success. 
Okay, Susan, so now it's time for the two of us to do some cooking together. together. First thing, I want to get you off that chicken. I want to show you anything to do but chicken. Okay. And I thought the perfect recipe for you would be a little smoked ham and lentil soup. And nails. A little no-nail smoked <laughs> ham and lentil soup. We're gonna start with getting a pan ready and adding some onions, carrot, celery, and garlic. And I wanted to show you a good technique with the garlic because mm -hmm. I want you to be using fresh garlic. Take a deep breath. Give it a nice slam. And what that does is it takes all the skin off, so you don't have to sit there and peel it. So your turn. Are you ready? I'm gonna cut my hand off. No, 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 you won't. So put that down. Give it your best shot. Go. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Shooting on garlic, that's great! There it is. Right. That worked. It's good. So, garlic. Sweat that off for a few minutes. Then we add bay leaf and thyme. Then all I want to do is throw in this beautiful ham hock. This is loaded with flavor. It's salted, it's smoked, so this is gonna really impart huge flavor to your soup. I think the fact that you're cooking for your daughter, we also want to make it nutritious. Lentils are great, they're loaded with iron, they've got lots of minerals. These melt away in the soup, they look creamy and they add this beautiful orange color. We're gonna cover with some chicken stock for flavor. And then it will taste like soup. It'll taste like soup. Absolutely. It will. <laughs> I promise That's you. That's easy. I can do that soup. one. Yay! Cooking with Christine feels like real cooking. I feel like I'm doing it properly with her assistance, and uh, I don't feel like I'm flailing so much anymore. Coming up, Susan starts to flail again. Her culinary evolution burns around the edges. Will she stop terrorizing her guests with her food and pull off a successful dinner party? The worst thing that can happen is that everything will burn and nobody will get anything to eat. Susan's daughter and friends know that she's useless and scattered in the kitchen. It's a disaster. She started by making rock-hard mashed potatoes. Oh. Then I showed her how to make scrumptious potatoes au gratin. It sounds complicated, mm -hmm. but it's really, really easy. And taught her to whip meringue from scratch. That's a good meringue. Beautiful. You're hired. She is making progress, but she's still got a long way to go to change her reputation in the kitchen. Learning a delicious dish like this simple soup is sure to help. What about all of this? What's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> can't do this when you're cooking for the family, you know. I did it on mine, too. On that one, too? There it is. Note With this self. drippy, messy presentation, Susan would never survive in a restaurant kitchen. So that doesn't bode well for what I've got planned after we finish this soup. Look how colorful and vibrant it is. Let's taste the soup and see what you think. That was good. I really love this soup. That's a flavor. So we can eat this soup just as it is because we've pulled the ham hock out, but you can also take the meat off, put it back in the soup, so you got your one pot, protein, everything in. Mm. So you think you're gonna make this soup? Make I can soup. make that soup. Absolutely, before you get too comfortable. We're gonna clear all this up. Now that we've done a little cooking together, I wanna take you out of the kitchen again mm -hmm. and take you on the bigger challenge than before when you made your pie. I'm taking Susan to a private club where she's going to be making hors d'oeuvres for hundreds of people. That high stress of catering is a great way to teach her timing and organization. And once she's done that, going back home to cook for her friends and Aiden, that's going to be nothing. What's about to happen here is a very exclusive cocktail party. Oh my god. All of these loot bags represent people who will be attending the cocktail party that you will be making the hors d'oeuvres for. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm making hors d'oeuvres. Oh, God. I'm feeling terrified. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, this is not good. So, Christine, welcome to our kitchen. Uh, we have 200 guests waiting for your hors d'oeuvres, so good luck to you. You have an hour and a half. You can use the oven, table, counters over here. It's all up to you, okay? See you in an hour and a half. Thank you. So let me tell you what you're making first. That would be good, right? That would be helpful, yes. Okay. We're making a lemon twill cone with a little mascarpone filling and some crushed pistachios right on top. 
So they look like little ice cream cones. Okay. It's got to be right on the money. Oh, you have to measure? Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely has to be measured. Oh, my goodness. I definitely feeling stressed. 200 is going to be tricky. How about breaking up your eggs? Okay. 12 whites. Okay. 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 You're keeping track of the numbers, right? Um, this is really precise, Susan. I... You can't keep breaking eggs. All right. Oh, my God. One. Susan's scattered personality is completely heightened in this environment. She's not focusing at all. OK, I think we're at 12. Flour, four and a half cups. Always flatten it off. There it is. That's a perfect one. Three, four. So four cups. And then, why don't we put the egg whites in? All right, let's hope it's 12. Yeah, let's hope it's 12. The only thing we're responsible for is this one hors d'oeuvre. If there aren't enough eggs, if the ingredients are in there, I don't have enough time to make a whole backup plan. So basically, if this doesn't work, we're out of luck. How's the arm? Is the arm building up? It's not as bad as the as uh, bad uh, egg whites. We have 45 minutes left, so not a whole lot of time. Sorry for disturbing you, Christine. Uh, the room is full, OK? There's 200 guests out there. We just shot some platters out. There's some more hors d'oeuvres going out, but those got to be ready in the next 45 minutes and make sure that we get those 200 pieces out. OK? Good luck to you. We'll see you back. Yeah, thanks a lot, chef. Here we go. Did you hear that? I did. That means no more messing around. Ah. They're burnt, I mean. Yes. I don't know what the heck is going on. What happened? I think maybe Susan made a mistake with the recipe. These are like totally burnt to a crisp. We'll, we'll do what we can do here. They're completely garbage. Completely garbage. We got nothing. I feel really buttery for some reason. We've got 200 guests waiting and something's gone wrong with the hors d'oeuvre recipe. The wheels are all burning on the edges. It's seeping out butter, they're soft, they're greasy, they're, we can't serve them like this. I don't know, it seems like there's too much butter in it. Are you sure you put the last half cup of uh, flour in? I'm not 100% sure. I think I did, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna take a chance because I don't know, it's just not coming together, it just feels really loose. I'm gonna just put it in. That's why you gotta be really sure when you're measuring that everything is in there. Gotcha. It looks like Susan forgot the last half cup of flour. If this batter can't be fixed, which I'm trying to salvage right now, we got nothing to serve for this event, so I'm not gonna look too good. And neither will Susan. Okay. They look pretty good. They look phenomenal now, actually. They're really, really hot, so be very careful. The flour totally screwed us up. Okay. That's okay, fine. we're good. Okay, I'm gonna just start then piping. So the piping bag with your right hand, what we're gonna make are like little ice cream cones. And then just do a little sprinkly with your pistachios. Okay, Susan, we okay. saved it. Let's go. Okay. Come over this way. This is what Susan made. There's a perfect balance between sweet and sour. It's incredible. It's really good. You like it? Yeah. Like that? I'm happy. I'm so happy. I'm pretty proud. I'm yeah. pretty proud. Yeah, they're edible. People seem to like them. So yeah. I'm quite happy. Yeah. Are you ready to cook? by yourself, for the family, your friends. I'd rather it wasn't by myself, but I will attempt it. I'm afraid I'll have things burning and not being ready on time and being half cooked. The usual fiascos that I always have. Susan, this is your big moment. The guests are gonna be arriving in about 45 minutes or so. We're gonna be making a very impressive bouillabaisse. Remember when you were making your smoked ham and lentil soup? Mm -hmm. Same concept, except there's going to be fish in it. Fish? Yes. Ah. This tells you what to do exactly when. Oh. All right, off you go. Uh, okay. I really am doing this by myself. 
I always have reservations about cooking. The worst thing that can happen is that everything will burn and nobody will get anything to eat. Yeah, Bailey's time. Here we go. It says deglaze the pot with white wine. So it's just adding a liquid or an alcohol. So we're deglazing. <laughs> no help. Thank no God one's helping. Down. I almost feel bad that I ate before we came for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> I think I may have destroyed Aiden's palate. But yes, I'm looking forward to giving her something that's actually uh, edible. Come on, All right. Susan. All right. All right, everybody, it's here. I think I'd rather watch everybody else. <laughs>